Well, here's a little uh, ceremony that Dave Scott performed on the surface of the moon uh, for the benefit of uh, viewers on Earth. Let's take a listen to that. Oh, I'll watch this. Okay. A, a good picture there. I've got the Beautiful picture, Dave. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Uh, but that proves that Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. Little science on the moon, and of course that very much pleased Joe Allen, uh, the Capcom, who uh, had uh, suggested that Dave Scott perform that little demonstration. Of course, on Earth, you would never be able to do that with a hammer and a feather because the feather would be slowed down by air resistance. But on the airless moon, it was a great demonstration of the principle first uh, outlined by Galileo. Well, after uh, Scott and Irwin left the moon and rendezvoused with Al Worden, they fired their big engine to leave lunar orbit, and they headed away from the moon. And during the trip home was the first of uh, something that I think is probably the most science fiction event in any Apollo mission. These J missions featured a spacewalk by the command module pilot on the way home from the moon to retrieve the film canisters from the scientific instrument module on the side of the service module. These are all of the high-resolution pictures that he had taken with those high-powered cameras while orbiting the moon. And uh, so this spacewalk roughly halfway between the moon and the earth was like something out of 2001 A Space Odyssey. Now here in this artwork you can see Al Worden um, retrieving one of the canisters of film and um, in the hatch, Jim Irwin is sort of tending his uh, umbilical, making sure it doesn't get uh, fouled up on anything. And they, the, these guys just described it as a totally spectacular experience. So uh, uh, yet another spectacular in an already spectacular mission. And here we are back on Earth in the Lunar Receiving Laboratory in Houston, uh, and Dave Scott there uh, with Joe Allen behind him on the left is looking through the glass inside the sealed uh, nitrogen filled cabinet at uh, sample 15415. That's a uh, sample collected at Spur Crater high on the slope of Hadley Delta, hundreds of feet above the surrounding plains. And it is, in fact, a piece of anorthosite, the uh, material that we now know formed the primordial crest of the moon and um, was such a, a, a bonus and a, a spectacular find for the astronauts who were very excited to find it. And, uh, you know, this picture really sums up Dave Scott's enthusiasm for the science of his mission and one of the reasons why Apollo, 16, uh, Apollo 15 as an extended scientific expedition was so successful. Well, Apollo 16, which flew in April of 1972, featured um, the first man to uh, make two trips into lunar orbit, John Young, who, of course, orbited the moon as command module pilot on Apollo 10. And with him were two rookies, lunar module pilot Charlie Duke and Ken Mattingly, who, uh, of course, had been bumped from the Apollo 13 mission by uh, a suspected but unfounded case of German measles. He never got the German measles, but he was bumped. But fortunately, had a seat on uh, Apollo 16 as the command module pilot. This is the Apollo 16 landing site, 
<clears throat> excuse me, which was located in the the moon's southern highlands or central highlands, really, um, which is the large bright area that we see when we look up at the full moon below uh, the two big dark areas of Mare Imbrium and Mare Serenitatis, the Sea of Rains and the Sea of uh, Serenity. And again, this big broad expanse of highlands is uh, some of the primordial crust of the moon. And geologists trying to figure out what rocks the astronauts would find had an idea that in this particular spot that they would find lava flows of differing compositions. They thought that the, uh, you notice in this, in this picture, you can sort of see planes uh, comprising most of what you see here, but in the background, you see some rather uh, uh, rounded mountains. And the geologists figured that the lava that formed the plains was more fluid and spread out more uh, freely, and therefore, uh, when it solidified, it formed relatively flat areas. And whereas different eruptions at a different time would have formed these mountains, which the lava would have been uh, thicker and uh, less fluid or more viscous, kind of like toothpaste, and uh, would have cooled into these various mountains that we see. So that was the thinking before Apollo 16, at least on the part of uh, several of the geologists who were training John Young and Charlie Duke for their surface uh, explorations. Now you can see here uh, the three traverses that Apollo 16 had, um, EVA-1 going out to a crater called Flag. That was also the, uh, the EVA in which they set up the ALSEP. And you may remember that John Young had a, uh, or if you've read the chapter, you know that John Young had a uh, unfortunate uh, problem with his foot being caught in one of the ALSEP cables and pulled it out and disabled one of the ALSEP experiments, which was the heat flow sensors for which uh, Charlie Duke had been drilling holes into the moon. Uh, but other than that, um, you know, it was a very successful uh, EVA. The second EVA uh, went up onto the flank of Stone Mountain in the background there. Uh, looking for uh, this other kind of lava, they hoped, called the Descartes Formation. And EVA-3 again headed out over the plains, which was called the Cayley Formation, to a very large crater called North Ray that you see in the foreground. Well, here's a couple of shots from EVA-1 at uh, Plum Crater, which is adjacent to Flag. And uh, on the main picture, you see John Young wielding his geology hammer, uh, about to uh, hit a piece off of a boulder. Um, and you see the rover in the background there, broadcasting live TV pictures of this to Earth and to the geologists in the back room, of course. And uh, because of those TV pictures, the geologists uh, just picked out a rock that they thought looked interesting on the rim of the crater. I think that's the rock that you see just to the right of the rover, sort of a dark little spot on the crater rim, if you can make that out. But anyway, in the inset there, Charlie Duke, uh, having uh, heard the astronaut, ha having heard the uh, Capcom request that he pick up that rock, has dropped to his knees and is rolling the rock up his leg so he can get a grip on it and bring it back to the rover. So it's actually in his right hand or between his right hand and the leg of his spacesuit, and he's rolling it up his above his knee, and he's about to get up and carry it to the rover. So these are a couple of scenes from their hunt for lavas of the Cayley Plains, but the problem was they didn't find any rocks that were volcanic. They kept finding rocks that had been created in the uh, heat and pressure of impacts, which are so powerful that they actually... Uh, not only do they break rocks up into fragments, but they weld together existing rock fragments into a new rock called a breccia. And breccias were what Young and Duke kept finding, much to the surprise of the geologists on Earth. 